Good evening. My name is Ellie Hasama, and I'm the new Dean of the Faculty of Music at the University of Toronto. I'm thrilled to welcome you to this evening's Opera Masterclass, part of our Fall 2021 Stratton Visitor Event. I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Named for a great collector of vocal music and historical recorded sound, the John R. Stratton Visitor in Music brings distinguished specialists in the field of voice, opera, and collaborative piano to the Faculty of Music. We are grateful to Stephen Clark, trustee of the Stratton Estate, for his generous support of the Faculty of Music. I would also like to thank Sandra Horst and Christina Bell for their wonderful work in making today possible and Lorna McDonald for so brilliantly organizing this year's event. I would like to pay special tribute to the superb staff at the Faculty of Music who have worked so hard to bring students and faculty back to the joyful conditions of music making. And I'm very excited to hear these young gifted musicians. This year, we are honored to welcome the acclaimed mezzo-soprano Susan Graham. She rose to the highest echelon of international performers within just a few years of her professional debut, mastering an astonishing race of repertoire and genres along the way. Her operatic roles span four centuries, from Monteverdi to Mozart to Strauss and Jake Heggie. She sang the leading ladies in the Metropolitan Opera's world premieres of John Harbison's The Great Gatsby and Tobias Picker's An American Tragedy and made her musical theater debut in Roger and Hammerstein's The King and I. In concert, she makes regular appearances with the world's foremost orchestras, often in French repertoire, while her distinguished discography comprises a wealth of opera, orchestral, and solo recordings. Among her numerous honors are a Grammy Award, an Opera News Award, and Musical America's Vocalist of the Year. Please join me in warmly welcoming Susan Graham as the John R. Stratton Visitor in Music. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a lovely introduction, and it makes me tired just listening to it. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful and very honored to be your visiting um, expert this week. Um, it's something that I've really been looking forward to. And unfortunately, as we know, in these times, we can't always do it the way that we'd like to in person, up close and personal. But um, I am coming to you from my apartment in New York City. You can see New York City outside the window. And um, because I am in my home, I want to let everybody know that there might be slight interruptions or distractions, namely, this one who is responsible for most of the interruption and distraction in my life. <laughs> but, you know, I have a puppy. So if you hear me saying, Ruby, stop, it's only because she's, you know, eating the carpet or something that she's not supposed to do. So I will try to keep that to a minimum. And um, hopefully she won't, I don't think she's going to sing along. I've been trying to get her to for six months, but she hasn't gotten the bug yet. Anyway, so thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And I guess we can begin, can't we? Hello, my name is Alex Matthews, and today Sandra and I will be performing Bella si come un angelo from Don Pasquale. Thank you, Alex. Before we start, can we talk a little bit about 
who this character is and what he's up to and what he's talking about. Sure. So um, this character is, uh, his name is Dr. Imana Testa, and he is um, trying to convince Don Pasquale uh, that he has the most ideal girl in the world for him and uh, later goes on to tell him that it's his sister. Um, but basically trying to um, pull the wool over his eyes a little bit and, and sell him on this ideal girl that is, you know, all these different characteristics. Um, so is he trying to, I mean, does he really believe all these things or is he sort of, as we say, over egging the pudding? Yeah, definitely over egging the pudding. He's exaggerating a little bit? <laughs> That's right, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good to know. G give us an idea of, of the kinds of things that the kinds of things that he's describing about her. Sure. If you, if you can, I know that's hard to ask off the cuff, okay. but. Yeah, so, I mean, he starts off by saying beautiful like an angel uh, on earth, a pilgrim, she's modest, she's kind beyond compare, she's kind to the unfortunate people, um, you know, and, and there's, there's um, allusions to her appearance, but also her spirit in different parts of both verses, so. Kind of she's just sounds like the perfect girl right exactly. yeah <laughs> everything you could possibly ever want okay. good 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 okay when you're ready Wonderful. You really have a beautiful voice. Bravo. Thank you. Very good. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> no, that was, that was really beautiful. Um, the funny thing about bel canto music is that it's even more than bel canto. Bel canto, of course, means beautiful singing. And of course, we have to have beautiful singing. But because like in even so many other genres too, 
we repeat the same things over and over and we repeat the same musical phrases and the same words, we always have to change it up a little bit. We always have to have something going on behind the repetition of each phrase. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard this your whole life. But um, so let's talk about, let's talk about some of what some of those different characteristics can be. I mean, let's talk about what he's trying to accomplish. And, you know, we talked a minute ago about how much does he mean it? How much is he exaggerating? How much can he overdo how beautiful her hair is? I mean, you know, I just want to get some different levels in some of these things because you sing it beautifully. You have a lovely voice. We know that your Italian is good. Basta. But what I want you to do is figure out how to bring it to life and how to become this character a little bit. Have you seen this opera, Don Pasquale? I've just seen it online. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think about about um, about this guy who's talking? Uh, what kind of person do you think he is? Uh, definitely kind of a salesman and, uh, and someone who's, uh, you know, he's just kind of very, very charismatic in a way and can, can probably- Is he confident? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is he suave? He's very suave. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I want you to start it for me again, like as if not that you were selling her like a car, yeah. but as if she were as if she were your race car and you're trying to make somebody else want it. Not that you're trying to convince him that he needs to have this beautiful race car, but that right. I am so lucky that I, I, this race car is mine. And so what I'm trying to say is a little more, a little more interior and, and super legato. Okay. Like, because this is one of those arias that's really well known and a lot of baritones sing it. That's right. Yeah. So I want to help you find a way to make it yours and to make it just a little bit different maybe than everybody else does it. You know, sometimes the more we try to convince people that we can sing really well, the less interesting we become. Right. So as I'm fond of saying, you can have a beautiful voice all day long, but if you're not telling me anything within 30 seconds, I'm bored. You know, lots of pretty voices out there, but I want to see you. I want to see what happens when you embrace the text a little bit, mm, taste the words a little bit. There, are, we have we have special flavor words like bella and um, uh, occhio and uh, conquide and chioma. You 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 did something with chioma that I liked. Sorriso incantator. I mean, you know these mm -hmm. these these ways that you can say these words. Right. Through your beautiful vocal technique, of course. And just to be clear, I'm going to spend more time tonight talking about these kinds of interpretive ideas than about vocal technique, because a, a lot of times I think they go hand in hand. Sure. And I'm, I'm, I promise you, I'm not trying to address any vocal element right now. I'm just going after a little bit of expression. OK, so start it again for me and and up up his confidence and suave level about. 47 <laughs> percent okay and that has to do with how you stand how you take your first breath i want you to take that first breath nice and early bella si come un angelo okay. in terra pellegrino fresca si come il giglio che sapre il sul mattino pretend you're italian got it All right. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to see a, a, a sexier Bella. Okay. Hang on, hang on. We can do better than that. Maybe not, don't open the Bella so much. Okay. Like it's a secret that only you know. 
All right. Just for just for our exercise purposes right now, we know when you're in an audition in a 4,000 seat house, you're not going to go, Bella. but today maybe you can try that just to get an idea of how much color you can come up with in these words. Okay. Okay. Siccome un angelo in terra pellegrino fresca siccome il giglio che sopra sul mattino occhio che parla e ride Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What does parla e ride mean? Speak in Latin. That's right. Yeah. So be completely amused by that. Okay. Start right there, Occhio. Occhio, keep hard. Occhio, keep hard. Good. Now, another thing about bel canto is we have a lot of ahs. We have a lot of melismas on ah, don't we? Yeah. Right. Uh, I want to say, I want to acknowledge that our, our very, very esteemed colleague, Edita Grubarova, passed away today. And I had the good fortune to appear in a couple of operas with her. And I have to say that she was the queen of bringing meaning to any ah, melisma, or any coloratura passage, she, it, you, you, you might not know what she was thinking, but you know she was thinking something. So every time you have these ahs, I want you to bring color to those ahs. It's not ah, that's not what you were doing, to be clear, yeah. but I want it to be more than a vocalism. Sure. They, tell me something, tell me what that particular ah is gonna be, rather than a transition to the next phrase. Right, okay. No, you tell me now. Okay. Think um, of something right now. <laughs> I mean, in this case, I would say it's like, it's, uh, we just talked about conquering the heart. So it's kind of a, uh, I'm a kind of got some machismo behind it maybe. And, and uh, he's still capturing the idea he just said about conquering someone's heart. Uh, so Interesting. I would like it to be a little more personal than machismo. Okay, <laughs> sure. Like live it. He con like she conquered my heart. Oh, ah, and then we're back to business. Ja, da, 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 da. Right. Okay. Let me see a little bit of you in there. Sure. Okay. Okay. Where would we like to start? Okay. Again. Yeah. Hang on. Let's see. Let's. Uh... Wherever you want to start. Uh, how about? Sguardo, where are we? Sguardo che i cor conquide. Okay. Sguardo che i cor conquide. We're talking about her innocent and and candid soul now mm -hmm. can we start it a little a little maybe a little softer sure a little more reflective a little more because she we're talking now we're going into talking about her modesty and her sweetness and her good loving kind so we're not going to yell about that we're gonna we're gonna embrace that and taste it and and have it a little more gentle okay good just start that verse again Oh! 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, I have to find where we're in the music. Oh, okay. Um, so the way that you say modestia imparejabile, mm. it's not just a series of syllables. It has to mean something. Yeah. Que se me des mañora. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a series of vowels, mm. punctuated by consonants but I'm not getting much, a lot of meaning behind them. Can you start this verse for me again and give me what inocente candida means? Give me what medes maignora means. Give me imparejabile. Okay. I, want, I want to hear the characters of these words. Okay. And also, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid vowel-wise mm -hmm. to not open quite so big. Okay. We don't have to do this. <laughs> we can be a little more contained sometimes with those vowels. And when you start softly, alma inocente candida, I would, I would, do you know what I mean if I mean gather the, if I say gather the vowel a little bit and bring it tiny bit forward, especially in your softer singing? Yep. Give yep. it a shot, see what happens. On a second, I want to hear que se me desmayinora. I want to hear all those vowels. I want to hear que se me desmayinora, not manora, manora. You can be small, but you still have to be distinct with those changing vowels, okay? Isn't it? Mayinora? I want to hear the E vowel. That's all I'm asking. Just the E vowel. Good. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What's happening at the end of that run? Are you, are, it sounded like you ran out of air, did oh, you? Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just that. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you say bonta, bonta, okay. that's yeah. a really important thing. It's not bonta, I have right, to do right, it right. now. <laughs> yeah. So start, go back to me, modestia imparejabile. And then come off of it earlier and take a nice big breath before bonta. And don't blow it all out on bonta. The yeah. red bonta. Then you have cane vina amora. Okay. It's a, you, have to, you have to meter. Hang on. <laughs> you have to meter out the air that you use. Mm -hmm. Okay, and don't blow it all out at the beginning. Okay. okay. things uh gentil what's the next word Dolce. Okay. Amor. Amorosa. Mm -hmm. three loving gentle very tasty words okay <laughs> that i want to hear uh go to the phrase before mm -hmm. Ay, misericordia. Good. 
you have to do that last little cadenza yes <laughs> you know what i'm gonna say uh i don't know maybe take more time like like take no time. <laughs> I don't know. but don't let us see you going ah, oh, okay. here it comes here it comes. okay i can do this i got this i got this i need you to stay in character dear got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. because you've said um and I'm only going to say this because I haven't said it enough yet, and I need you to understand it even more. Per far beato, beato. Whatever you do, yeah, yeah. but it has to again have that that movement it can it can go fast it can go slow it can go fast slow fast but it has to have some shape that i that means something to you because you've maybe maybe he's been selling this to to don pasquale all along and suddenly he feels it himself let's say that he really feels that beat encore okay. that maybe he feels that to himself at that point so start it back it il che la fata nascere per far beato and then go to the cadenza and stay keep them connected and stay in character okay il che la fata nascere per far beato Good. Much better. Okay. I think, you, I think you did a great job. Now, if we had about 30 more minutes, yeah. we would work on arms, but, but yeah. I will just say yes. that I want you to, I'll, I'll leave you with this, mm -hmm. that I want you to just be aware <laughs> of your gesture. And sometimes we do this, sometimes we do this and it's perfectly legit. But when it becomes like a, a little robot arms, yeah. That doesn't do any of us any good. It okay. just, it just, it just does makes you feel good because you you don't feel comfortable just having your arms do nothing. But it's okay to have arms do nothing. It's also okay to express with one hand or the other hand or or both at the same time. But sometimes this, you know, this doesn't really doesn't usually mean anything. Got it. Okay. But just just keep an eye on that. Sure. But uh, and also, so to recap. What are you gonna? What do you? How are you gonna think about this aria going forward? Um, so, I guess just uh, the the actual kind of delectable quality of the words uh, mm -hmm. more, and um, and also just also the, the kind of the getting caught up in your own con kind of aspect of 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 uh, oh you know even I'm <laughs> being overtaken by this this amazing thing that I'm I'm selling you know and and I want it for myself in a, in the sense towards the end um as well as uh maybe you know a smaller aperture at times mm -hmm. yeah good and don't be afraid to sing softly yeah especially as a baritone a baritone who can make beautiful sounds softly and bring the audience in is is a special thing and i, I and especially when you're doing when you're doing stuff with text because as i said before this is a very popular aria and it's 
it's tune everyone knows and we don't want you to be you know another guy who's reciting this aria we want it to mean something to you yes so yeah just embrace i mean in everything you do embrace the text and don't ever let it become rote because as as we all know in our brains but sometimes forget in the execution of what we're doing we're supposed to make everybody think that we're making this up on the spot right we are just now thinking of these words i, I just now thought of how beautiful her eyes are in parle ridere and and modestia impareggiabile all of these things i'm just now thinking of and I feel them, so I have to say them. And in bel canto, I feel them so hard that I have to say them 47 times. <laughs> so, you know, give us a reason for all of that stuff. Right, okay. When we start sounding like we're reading the telephone book because we've practiced voi que sapete so many times, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it always has to be new. It always has to be fresh. And it's much more fun for you too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Noelle Slaney, and today Sandra and I will be performing Endless Pleasure from Handel's simile. Perfect. You look like a simile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about who she is and where she is in this moment. So in this moment, um, she almost married a prince, but she, yeah. she prayed to Jove to not let the marriage happen because she's actually in love with him. Uh, so he- um, Jove being Jupiter. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he, he carries her away and makes her his mistress. Um, so in this moment, they've just had their whole um, little love affair and she's just reveling in how much she's enjoying this new life. And what's the name of the Aria again? Endless Pleasure. There you go. stop you real quick hang on hang on i'm gonna stop you real quick the, beautiful i this is a this is a, a big aria so i'm gonna just mention something from the beginning that we're gonna see if uh if it appeals to you so how old is she um in your mind there's no right answer i would say probably around 17 or 18 so she's young she's finding herself in a situation she never thought that she'd be in, right? right? So this is something, I mean, she's, she's experienced, she's having a mature experience, mm -hmm. but at the same time, she's young. Yes. So let's see what would happen if you thought of her as being quite a young girl and a little bit lighter. Can you, can you, if I say a little bit lighter in texture, does that mean anything to you? Can you just a little, I would say, maybe, sh I don't even know how to describe it. Endless pleasure, pleasure, endless pleasure. Think of it like you're a, like a harpsichord kind of. 
Okay, sure. Instead of a viola da gamba. <laughs> You're not a viola da gamba, I promise. But think of it like, and, and when it starts, the measure can, can um, uh, I'm sorry, let's see. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sandra, can you, um, can you give us maybe the two measures before she comes in? And then, Noelle, I want you to take a nice early breath. Maybe at the downbeat of the bar that you have to sing in. Endless pleasure. A nice slow inhale. And then let the sound kind of like just pop out. Okay. Endless pleasure. Endless pleasure. It's so exciting as if you were gasping. Okay, sure. Okay. Nana, no, no, you didn't breathe early enough. You didn't breathe early enough. Okay. Yeah. Good. How does how does she feel about Jove reclining on her bosom? I think she's a little triumphant about it. Yeah, she's basically useless now. His thunder lies. You're about to say yes. because you you he's 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 in his happy place. <laughs> he doesn't need thunderbolts right now. He's got you right. So this is a change of color. It's sort of the little B section of the aria. So give us, give us a slight change of color when you, when you start this. Um, Sandra kind of, can you, give us the, can you give us the little interlude there? So, want you, so hang on, Sandra, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I want you to think on her bosom, Jove reclining useless now his thunder lies and again we're, we're going back to the same thing we had with Alex we say phrases over and over and over again so bring a different level of intensity a different level of ecstasy also in your in your melismatic phrases um, there there are ways to shape those melismas that we can talk about in a minute but um, for now let's do this let's do this upcoming little little verse um, to her arms, his bolts resigning and his lightning to her eyes. What do you think that means? Um, so he's just left, like he's, he's just completely blissful, just laying there with her. And he's given up his power. Um, so he's uh -huh. powerless in this moment. And she's the reason why. Oh, he's given up his bolt to her arms and he's given up his lightning to her beautiful eyes. Got it. Got it. Now, okay, good. Start back it on her bosom and give her, go ahead and give her four, four bars, Sandra. Okay. I'm going to just say useless. That's an octave leap, right? Is it? Is it? Oh, it's, an, uh, it's a seventh. So useless, but you've just been hanging up on that high G. And I want the second syllable of the word useless, the high G, to have as much resonance and as much space as the long G did right before. Do you know what I mean? 
So what does that mean? It means that you don't want to come useless. You want to maintain that space and then just dip down for useless. So that, but you can, you need to maintain that space when you sing the lower note. Okay, because I want I want you to keep keep everything in line so that we're not going use last. Otherwise, when we make those big leaps, we start sounding like a chicken. You did not sound like a chicken, however. Um, can you start for me at um, use useless now? His thunder lies, and then start it useless now. Just start there. And that's a perfect phrase because you're ascending to, to do a, give it a little more juice as you go up that scale. Right? Okay, once more to, once more from that spot. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. This is cool. This is where Handel gets really cool because he's, he's now throwing in all these accidentals and he's sort of changing some of the tonalities a little bit. So. I want, I need to hear those pitches super clear and just be sure of them. To her arms, his bolts residing and his lightning to her eyes and lightning. Same thing. Okay. Okay. Good. Do her arms. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to hear those B naturals really, really stand out, okay? Do that one more time. Give me, let me hear those B naturals because they're important. No, 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 wait a second. I need, I need those notes very clear too. They're kind, you're kind of schmicing around. They're, they're a little too uh, casual. Um, to her arms. We're back in B flats now. So we need to know that for sure too. So to her arms, to her arms resigning. The thing about handle is you can't cheat. It's very exposed. And you are an instrument. You're like a recorder. You know how those recorders, you can hear them over everything. You know, you can have a whole handle orchestra, but if one recorder is playing, boy, does it stand out. And you have to have that same clarity. Okay. okay? So um, go back to the first to her arms so that I can hear the difference between the B natural, the, the sort of E major weirdness, and then going back into the B flats. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hang on, that's very good, very much more clear. I wanted, I just want to hear um, this one. And I want you to sing those notes for me a cappella and slowly, please. Two. That's a big third. To her arms. Do one more time. Keep going. Now, just go back and check. You're sing You're not singing wrong notes, but I want to hear them crystal clear. Okay, good. Uh, start at that to her arms with Sandra, and then keep going. 
something fun can we do something fun with the word lightning can we do something with lightning sure that's fun um good good job and his lightning to her eyes to her legato is bolts resigning and then maybe a little more marcato and his lightning to her eyes okay try that yes there mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Good. Now, when you get to the end of that whole thing, that was very good. The articulation was very good. But when you get to the end of that phrase, and his lightning into her eyes, it's like triumphant. I got to the end of it. And I'm going to say it one more time for emphasis. Okay. Little, be a little more solid in that last statement of it, okay? Sure. And because I liked it so much, I want you to go back to the beginning of that melisma. So, to her eyes and his love of and, and change, you know, give it shape. Tiara, pada, 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 little two note phrases mm -hmm. until you don't want to do that anymore. And then make them longer phrases. But I think it's nice to start out. I think you're doing an embellishment in there anyway, which is good. Finish it strong, but start little tick, 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 because then it gives you an arc for that whole melisma. Okay. It's this one. Ta -ti -ta -pi -pa -pa -ra -pa -ra -ta. Yeah, yeah, the first one. Okay, okay. Good, very good. I think that at the top of the, oh, right. When you go, when you start the endless pleasure again after all that lightning business, mm -hmm. and then you have that long melisma. When you repeat those, da -da 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 -da. give us some growth through that phrase and then. And then think of a new way to repeat the phrasing. Endless pleasure, endless pleasure, endless love. Similar joys above. You change the articulation. You change what's legato, what's marcato, which notes are short. How the sort of roller coaster of those phrases goes. 
And then you've got that other, that next great big melisma coming up, right? Melis, love, simile, and joy. And when you are crescendoing to go up to that G, it's a leap of a fifth, right? Yes. So we're going to need more space. I would say crescendo into that space. Oh, it's a fourth, sorry. Instead of give it more space. Okay. Give more space. The higher you go, okay? Um, and you're going, you because so you go, uh, Emily and Joe. It goes all over the place, doesn't it? And every time you have those long notes, you have to grow into something. I just want you to give shape. Just give shape to these phrases. The cardinal rule is we never sit on a long note and do nothing. <laughs> we either have to get louder or softer or more intense or less intense, whatever. Um, so do that again. Try that again from that page turn, which is uh, the, the, the recap of endless pleasure. Endless pleasure, endless pleasure, endless pleasure. And give us, just give us direction, okay? Sorry? Just give us direction in all of those long phrases, okay? Thanks. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you going? Yes. I can't hear those notes. It just sounds like you're scooping. So if you're going to do those notes, I want to hear each note, okay? <laughs> and that means you're going to have to brighten that vowel, bring it forward a little bit, mm -hmm. and and narrow your aperture, as Alex so deftly put it. Because um, you can't go. <laughs> you can't get articulation through too big of a space. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> And a nice bright A. Okay. Keep that placement, it's good. in it. I think you just discovered, or maybe I just discovered it, and you knew it all along. When you narrowed that vowel, mm -hmm. a clarity came into your sound that I hadn't heard before. Yes. Just for kicks, will you go back to the beginning mm -hmm. and keep that little bright air? Eh in the front, don't over open, and start the aria again, if you wouldn't mind. We can have two bars, Sandra. Is that okay, Noel? Yes. Okay. And don't feel like you have to, don't feel like you have to make a lot of sound. I'm more interested in the placement of that vowel right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh. 
little, little, little. on that E flat. good i think that's important for you it is it's something i think it's because there was a clarity of articulation and of pitch mm -hmm. that i heard when you when you sort of just again we're gathering the sound we're gathering the vowel and it just gives us a little more control especially in early music where you know there's 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 not a lot of wiggle room <laughs> you know how does it does it feel okay to you Okay, good, good. Um, how how comfortable are you with that high high C at the end? Very. Good. Stay on it longer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. That's wonderful, Noelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really good work. Thank you. <laughs> Next victim. Hello. Hi, my name is Angelo Moretti, and uh, today Sandra and I will be performing uh, Count Alma Viva's aria Ecco Ridente in Cielo from Rossini's Il Barbiere di Siviglia. Great. Okay, so tell me who he is and what this aria is all about to him. Yes, so this aria basically pretty much starts off the opera, and um, it's where I hire my buddy Fiorello and a couple of musicians around the area to serenade um, Rosina, and I'm underneath his, uh, her balcony at the moment. Um, and it's been something I've been doing day in, day out, hoping to see her. Uh, I'm just singing this song. Uh, and halfway through this aria, I actually see some kind of a shadow and some kind of hope um, that she might um, come out from that, from her window. Okay. All right. Does she know who he is? No, no idea. And I'm actually, well, I am a, I'm a count, but I'm also pretending to be someone of lower status to kind of appeal to her, this kind of more romantic and... This, this lover image, and he even makes up a name later on in the, in the, in the opera. 
Right, 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 right. Okay, good. Um, do you speak Italian? A little bit at home, yes. I was wondering. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Then uh, we have high hopes. <laughs> good. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're ready. Good, good. Can, can we can we go back and, and talk about some things? Lovely, very good Italian. <laughs> okay, so another bel canto aria. Mm -hmm. And I want you, I mean, this is also one that, that a lot of people know. Yeah. And so I want you to introduce us in the opening phrases with the best legato you can come up with. Okay, yes. Now, how do we do legato? Mainly with breath. Mm. So when you take your breath, where do you feel it? Um, usually I try to feel it as kind of grounded in all, I, I tried at my entire body, really. That's, that's the goal, but it's- um, Even your ankles? I, I remind <laughs> you often to keep it in the ankles, yes. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Mainly, I'm concerned about your ribs and your abdomen. Okay. And ribs go all the way around, don't they? Put your hand on your bottom ribs, like like this. Yep. Now, take a deep breath. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, put your hand put put your hand on your belly button. Put one on your belly button, and one on your ribs. Yes. And do the same thing. Good. Do you see how the whole thing goes out? Yeah. That's the feeling that I want you to have. And then when you sing, Ecco ridente in cielo, it's like one violin bow. You don't happen to play the violin, do you? I do not, no. <laughs> I'm sure you know people who do. So <laughs> think of that, that first phrase, especially as just one nice long violin bow keeping that expansion mm -hmm. and i'm going to throw one more idea at you yes. whenever you say the vowel e like ridente um sorgi dormir mm -hmm. idol mio i want you to think about what would happen if you uh Thought of the vowel a little bit taller. Okay. Yeah. So sing for me. Uh, sing for me this. Mio. Mio. Now think of that as more high space inside that E and do this for me. Mio. Mio. 
stick a little taller and pucker, pull, pull with your fingers, your lips forward a tiny bit more and support it. That's better, that's better. Does it feel different to you? Yeah, it's just, it's a similar thing to what Alice was saying about the, the spring it, or when, when you said gather. You're gathering, gathering. Yeah. yes. But in your case, you also need more height back here because it's a balance, isn't it? All of our, all of our singing is a balance. Yeah. It's a balance with placement and breath. So when you, have, when you have a vowel that's out here, it also has to have its space back here because I'm not interested in me, nor am I interested in me. I want both of those things. Yes. Me, yeah. me. It almost feels like you're saying a, an O, but with E and but with a pucker in front. Try that. Sing ma, ma, ma. Now, with that space, think of the E in front. Me, ma, me, That's it. That's it. Uh huh. That's it. <laughs> That's the E vowel I want. Yeah. Now do it here. Yes. Yeah. It's more. There's more depth to it. Yes. Yes. And now go back and forth. E o e o e o e o. But don't change the inside space. Okay. No. Keep this nice. Good. Good. I can use a little more space in the E. Your tongue is popping up, which is what's yeah. making you go. You're going, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. be aware of what your tongue's doing inside your mouth. Okay. Oh, yeah. It needs to stay, stay as low as, as possible. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's better. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Now sing the first phrase. You let the re slip in. Echo ridente. Not beaten. Ridente. Every time you get to those e vowels, you're going to have to like okay. pinch yourself to, to be aware because it's a habit that's going to take a minute to break. Sure. Right. Echo ridente. Good. You can connect that. You can connect that. You just came off your breath. Spunta, spunta. Yes. Keep that air going and keep the connection with the breath, the voice on the breath. Yes. Right there. Good. Hang on a second. Give me an ah right here. Ah. Remember that nice, beautiful space you found on the O yes. that informed your E? Let's find that O again right here. Mm. Oh. Oh. A little more space back here. Oh. Are you singing? Are you singing ah or O? Oh? I'm trying to sing an O oh there. Oh. Okay. Or, yeah. oh. 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 I want more. I want a rounder sound. Okay. Yep. Can you try that? Oh. Good. Now turn that O. Oh. But keeping that space back there. Yeah. Oh. I'm not here. I need to hear a little more differentiation between the vowels. Yeah. Try it here. Try it here. That's good. Now go up one step. Oh. Good. One more.
good. Good. That's where it's going to want to turn over a little bit anyway. What I'm trying to do is is just give some give some height to your ah vowel and some some height and some depth to your ah vowel. Again, yeah. I don't want all oh, and I don't want ah. I want a combination of those things. Sure. So let's see. Uh, where did we get to? Ancora. That's right. E tu non sorgi ancora. I like a bright Italian vowel, but I also want it to have some resonance. Okay. Okay. So um, go back to spunta. Spunta yeah. and connect it. Yep. No, sorry. That was, I was giving you a thumbs up. <laughs> Good. Good. Note. that's great yeah. you caught it didn't you uh, extra finding the extra space right in the middle yeah yes yes and it it makes you sound about four and a half years more mature that's good <laughs> i don't know how old you are how old are you 23 perfect yeah. perfect this is important for you to learn now that you're 23 yes yes um good that's really good i'm so proud of you okay don't be cozy cozy what what do you do there Okay. See, cozy, and then, and you're so in love with her. Yeah. So all of these ahs have to be. Yes. Cozy ah. Oh, sorry. Go back, go back earlier, go back earlier. Do the thing, uh, eh, tu non sorge ancora. Eh, tu non sorge ancora. You got your E's going. Excuse me one sec. No problem. <laughs> Belly doll, me. Oh, do this. Do this when you sing that. Yes, hang on, stop. That was awesome. Yeah, that wasn't, that didn't feel held at all. It just yeah. felt like everything else. Yeah. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. This is important. Do it again. Yep. Good. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry. Hang on, can you do can you do a gourmet thing for me? Sure, I'll try. You know, on that note. Yeah, I could try my best. Yeah. I bet you can. Uh, can me? I, that was beautiful. Thank you. This one, can you say? Oh. Hey, me. <laughs> 
Paul, keep your fingers here. Uh, yep. Good, good. Go on thinking yeah. of everything that we've been talking about. I think you should keep this here for now. Okay. Yeah. Because your tendency, I can see your lips biting your fingers in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad the fingers won, which is good. But yeah, this is this is a this is a very cool thing for you. Sure. Yeah. Going on. Okay, hang on a second. Yes. This is good. Now, in order to accomplish all of this fast movie stuff, we're going to have to brighten our vowel a little bit and we're going to have to not push the voice. Yeah. So, yeah. Think it forward. Um, see T. Excuse me one second. Hang on. And yes, as stated before, the carpet's intact. My dog was. Yeah. A scarf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because <laughs> that's fun. That's how she rolls. Okay. All right. Again. Yes. The bright vowel. Close this shut. Keep this shut. Sorry. Nice and <laughs> nice and and uh, and bright. And keep that breath going. Yep. No, 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 no. No, yes, too. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, okay. Brighter still. Yep. Oh, and make it smaller. Make your mouth small. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay, now what I want you to do. Um I need to hear those notes, please. Sure. Uh, yep. uh, can you start there? Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, that last little, that last little uh, group of sixteenth notes. I'm not getting. This is good, but. I want to hear that one. Do it slowly for me, please. Beyonce. Beyonce. Now, when you go up to that G, I need a little brighter up. Beyonce. You've got it. Beyonce. Good. Okay. Now, the other, another thing, this is for everybody who has to do music like this. When we have moving notes and the, con and the uh, syllable ends with an N, uh. <laughs> Yeah. It's easy to go beyonce, yeah. but I have to have a vowel on all those notes. Okay. So do it one more time for me, please. And don't put the N in until the very last second. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. And, and do you want to do a little detachment of those? Yeah, I, I mean, he's got, he's got a slur over staccato, so mm -hmm. yeah. whatever. What you mean now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. And you know what? It was clearer too. Yeah. It was clearer. Yeah. It's easy to, I, I'm not suggesting that you're being lazy, but it's easy to get lazy once we've done these over and over again and we stop thinking about the notes, we stop thinking about like, you know, Sandra has to engage her fingers to play these notes this fast. 
all we have to do, we kind of just go, ah, and kind of toss it up there like a frisbee and hope that it doesn't land on the roof. But sometimes we have to just keep a little bit more, more awareness yeah. of where we are mm. and what phrase we're in and what measure we're in. And, oh my gosh, this one is tricky coming up. I have to be really clear with this articulation and with this tuning yeah. because it's got little half steps in it that sometimes are hard to tune, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I'm calling for uh, consciousness and awareness. Okay, good. That was good. Keep going. Yep. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Thank you. You plugged in. Yeah, fine. Way to go. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> Sandra. Good. Now, the very last cadenza that you had was on an A vowel. Yes. Do it again and do this. Because yep. I, I, you can get a little bit more height on it and keep yeah. the brightness. And it'll uh, be okay, even. Modified? Yes. The whole last cadenza after the, after the cut. Oh, yes. After the cut. Okay. Yeah. Just from one, two. Dude, I'm gonna use these more often. <laughs> Did you see how how in how lined up that? This goes where it wants to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where you want it to be. Yeah, it's all lined up and it fits perfectly together. Sure. And that uh, uh, I found one more <laughs> tricky little N. Yeah, it's the last contento. Where is it? Oh, it's right. It's right before the the penultimate cadenza. Right before the cut. Oh, dolce contento. Yeah. Just keep the vowel open until that. Just look at that one. Excellent, thank excellent you. work. I really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, thank you, really good job, bravo. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Oof. Okay, hang on. The culprit. Oh. I know, right? She's so cute, but she gets away with murder. She eats my scarves. She eats my music. She eats the carpet. I mean, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I had to go and pull a, a nice expensive scarf out of her mouth about five minutes ago. So I'm just firing the warning shot now. You behave, you little thing. You behave. She's so cute. Though. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Heidi Duncan. Uh, Sandra and I will be performing... Fantastic. So tell me who this young lady is who's saying all these words and what she's talking about. Um, so Gilda is the daughter of uh, Rigoletto, who is a servant to the Mantua, and he has just come to her window and seduced her. They sing this big um, 
duet. They're professing their love to each other. It's a very love at first sight type of situation. And at the beginning of the aria, he's, she's watching him kind of just leave off her balcony and she's completely infatuated with him. And that's basically the whole aria. <laughs> That's true. Um, but so what does caro nome que el mio cor mean? Um, dear name, you are so beloved. And she, I, I. She doesn't even know his real name, does she? She doesn't know his real name. <laughs> this is another, I mean, it's just like ecoridente. I mean, it's, a, it's, she's just had a serenade from somebody who she thinks is somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're both counts, right? Um, okay, so what is his name that she, what does she think his name is? I believe it's Walter. Gualtier, yeah. Walter. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So Wally has been sneaking under her window. <laughs> good, good. Okay, and it, and she, it had, how well does she know Walter? Oh, she doesn't know him at all. She, he, he's told her that he's a student. Um, and her father really only lets her go to church and to school, and that's it. So um, she doesn't get much. She's very inexperienced. In <laughs> she doesn't get out much, <laughs> as we like to say. Okay, good. So, so this is all new to her. Very new. Good. Fabulous. How old do you think she is? I'd say she's probably about 16. I'd buy that. Yeah. She okay. <laughs> when you're ready. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm gonna, it's beautiful, be absolutely beautiful. I want you to say his name a little more clearly and with a little more something. You can decide what that is. Okay. Breathlessness, uh, dis un disbelief, imagining what could be, exploring potential, dreamy, whatever you want it to be. And I want you to take a nice early breath. Once more. Thank you, Sandra. Can I hear more G? Can I hear more? That's beautiful, beautiful sound. I just want to hear more. I want to hear, just pronounce the word as if you could not say it enough. You could, you, I cannot say this word. You know how when you like get a crush on somebody, you first start going out with somebody and you just you bring up their name all the time in conversation. Um, it's like that. Okay. <laughs> Gualtier Malde. Oh, he's so fabulous. Okay. Beautiful.
lovely, really lovely, really lovely. There's some, there's some, um, it's hard for me to hear overtones through this medium. Um, there are a couple of places only that I, I mean, I, I felt like maybe you could be a little bit more grounded because it seemed to be coming in the high parts. It's, it's easy to come off the voice when you're doing all that stratospheric stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, it's, it's sort of hard to tell over this medium. Um, I have a question. I have an experiment. Okay. Could you start the Karanome part and do it as if those rests were not in there? Can you do it for me once legato just to understand how the breath moves through that phrase in spite of the rests? Yeah. Do it super legato um, until I stop you. No, 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 no rests, no rests. Okay. Just, okay. Oh, no, no. just eliminate the rests. Okay. As if it were just one long phrase with no rests. <laughs> Can you can you can you connect them even more? Can you connect the vowels even more? Like it's one long violin bow, one long phrase that never had any rests in it. I know your body wants to do it differently, but I'm I'm challenging your breath right here. Okay. Keep going. Breathe if you need to. Good, good, good. Now, isn't that interesting? Because your body wants to do something different. Now go back and do it, but maintain that expansion that you had and that support that you had when it was all legato. Let's talk about breath for one second. Hang on, because I can, that's a, you wore the perfect dress because I can see what your breath is doing. It's, it's really good. But I want you to be aware, oh goodness, be aware of this part. Okay. Be aware of those ribs that, put your hands on your ribs like this. Okay. And it, it, breathe out, breathe in. Do they move? Mm -hmm. Okay, now breathe out. And now take another deep, deep breath in. And if you can feel that, that air, that where that where that's going. And now for me, put your hand on your belly button. Okay. Right? And you feel that? Now take another breath in and I want you to feel the belly button and the ribs. Ready? Go. See, see how much you can, uh, how much of that expansion you can, you can um, utilize okay. while the phrase is happening. Okay. okay. And you can, you can put the rest back in. <laughs> Thank you. Keep going. Good. Feel it. Keep doing that and be aware of this one.
Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I want to ask you something. This is beautiful. Beautiful. It feels so connected. Yeah. Now, when you say, um, did you see what we did a minute ago? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to do those E's, those E's. I don't want them to get too E. -E. I want you to keep that space. And if you can, in this phrase and in the next one, a te sempre volerà. Can you vibrate? Be aware to vibrate on every note. Okay. Even the quick ones. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Go back. Give people ground. Ground. Sure. Yeah. Are you vibrating on all of those D's? No. Try again. <laughs> D sharp. Sorry. You weren't vibrating on those descending notes. You need to vibrate on those descending okay. notes. Those are the ones I'm really after. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's to vibrate. You were brilliant up until then. Ah, okay. Go back to Carl <laughs> or whatever, whatever the last note was before that. Yes. That's the one I want. So, <laughs> and also, what, what is the note? 
it's an F sharp. It's the fifth. Yes, you don't get to quit vibrating just because you're almost at the end. <laughs> I can't tell you that is so much better because you know what? You stayed in pitch. You didn't go sharp. You kept vibrating. The sound had life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it, it had shape. The phrases had shape. Very well done. Thanks. Very well done. Bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Okay. I'm coming. Okay. Hi, hi. Don't hi. run. <laughs> my name is Danuri Asabuke, and today Sandra and I will be performing Mein Zinen, Mein Vinen from Die Tote Stadt by Korngold. Very good. Do you speak German? Uh, no. <laughs> do you do very much German repertoire? Or is this new? Is this a new uh, adventure? This, um, I learned this when I was in undergrad, but it's still a work in progress. It always will be, my dear. Everything will be. I promise you that. Yeah. Um, let, me get a, let me get a sip of water. Good. Now tell me about this aria and tell me who he is and what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, so my character is Fritz and basically the aria takes place on the main character's mind which is paul um i'm part of marietta's group which is um i'm the clown of the troupe basically and i'm singing an aria based on oh i'm singing an aria in recollection of distant um oh, a past experience in terms of love and affair that i used to experience but it all relates to fritz um, experience when he lost his um wife okay mm -hmm. so so it's reflective and it's uh nostalgic mm -hmm. that's what i always i always get when i hear this aria and i've heard this aria a bunch um and it's 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 a reflection a, a nostalgic kind of sentimental past thing that you're thinking about right it's wistful yeah mm -hmm. so um can we just go over the german real quick can you just speak the german for me real quick yeah mein sehnen mein wenen es träumt sich zurück im ganze gewann ich verlor ich mein glück im tanz am rhein bei mondenschein gestand mir's aus blauer ein inniger blick Gestand mir's ihr bitten Wort, gestand mir's, oh, oh bleib, bleib, oh gib mir nicht Wort, bewahre der Heimat, Heimat, Heimat still, Heimat, um, still blühendes Glück, mein Sehnen, mein Wenen, es träumt sich zurück, Zauber der Ferne ward in der Silbe der Blatt, Seele den Brand. Seele der Brand. Den, Aber den Brand. Den, den Brand. Den, D-E-N, den. Den Brand. There you go. Taube der, Taube des Tanze, Lockte, Bart, Komödiant. Komödiant. Mm -hmm. Volks in der, oh my goodness. <laughs> I know that this is really hard to do. For those of you who don't know, this is really hard to do. Folgt ihr der Wunder 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 Süßen. Good. Um, lernt unter Tränen küssen. Good. Um, Rausch und Not, Wahn und Glück, das ist Gaukler's Geschick. Das ist Gaukler's Geschick. That's right. Yeah. Good. Very good. That's that's difficult to do, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> we rely so much. I mean, for anybody who's listening who might not be a singer, we rely so much on 
the combination of the music and the text and it, it becomes one entity. So to separate them is, um, is, is like a circus act. Mm -hmm. And since you're playing a clown, you should, you, should, you know, it's, it's good that you can do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. I, I love this. I love this. Are you like this Aria? Um, yes. At some point. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Act like you love it. Okay. Pretend you love it for our purposes today, please. I will. <laughs> okay, good.
Bravo. Bravo. Ravi, that was beautiful, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's pretty beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you sound like you love it, my, my friend. I got to tell you. I um, don't have an enormous amount to say about this. What I, I mean, the top seems easy for you. Yes. <laughs> Did you used to be a tenor? Uh, no. Do you have aspirations to become one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one. People used to ask me all the time, um, do you think you might really be a soprano? I went, no, no. <laughs> it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Is what I always say about that. <clears throat> so, the you you have that you have that that yearning quality in your sound, and you have that that looking back on the past uh, color down well. I think I would I I don't know I may be wrong about this, but I would like to hear a little more similarity in the vowels in Zanin and Bainan. Okay. I would like to just tighten up, close up that second one a little bit more. Mein Zanin, mein Venen. Don't squeeze them. Okay. But I don't know. I would like, uh, just for harmonic, um, harmonic vocalization, mm -hmm. vowel harmony. Uh, you don't move this at all. It's It's just changing the u from an u to an umlaut u for that word I I guess I guess I'd like for you to start it again and just think as much as much full ripe legato. Okay. as you can give me. We already know you sing beautifully. You don't have to prove that to me. I already know that. So now, again, pretend you love it. And do, as if you were singing it for you, hmm. as if you were just humming it to yourself and it was all for you and nobody was around and you just wanted to sing this beautiful song just for you. I'm looking for for the gentleness and the sort of inichkeit, interior kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And just such legato. Show off your legato. Okay. Okay. I want you to, I'm getting imtansa geva. I want you to be gently legato. Imtansa geva. Okay? Yes. Right there. Good. Make the second syllable of blue in this the same smallness as blue is. Because hmm. you went blue and this, hmm. blue and 
tremendous. And it'll keep that in line because there's a beautiful color up there on that umlaut U, but then make the next note in that same space. Okay. Okay, start at um, Bavara de Heimat. Love it, love it. Thank you. It's important for that last word to be the most, and I mean, Corn Gold gave you a gift there. Mm. <laughs> on, a, on a D flat, he gave you a umlaut. Mm. It's just, and it has to have all the space back there you can muster, and it has to be the most beautiful sound that you can make because that will leave us with a melted heart. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's really beautiful. Basically, thank you for singing it for me again. Um, I, you know, whoever taught you German is doing a really good job. Thank you. I you so, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, I, I am of the school, probably because I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time listening to Austrians speak, and there's their German is not always the the highest Hochdeutsch you can get. But for instance. Um, war in die Seele. How do you do those last, the, the, the schwa at the end of a word? Do you say Seele or Seele or Seele? Say again. Sing that for me. War in die Seele. Will you do me a favor? See what happens if you make it slightly less zé but more zé Almost like the French 
almost like the French disappearing vowel. Okay. Try it, try it, just try it. I want, I'm just curious. A little bit less, zele, almost that, that circle with a slash through it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay. What, what do y'all think in the room? Yeah. yeah, it seems to keep the vowels in line a little bit more. Think about that as you go through the text and, and see if there are any other of those final sort of, you know, schwa vowels. Mm -hmm. To me, it sounds it sounds more Deutsch. Vara, isn't it? Bavara. Oh, gay mir nicht fort bavara der Heimat. Will you do that phrase for me? Oh, gay mir nicht fort bavara der Heimat. That might have been too French. That might have been slightly too French. <laughs> Can you split the difference? Can you split the like like do it, but don't don't pucker on it. I know that for once I'm saying don't pucker, but making everybody else do this all night. But bavar, make it small, not a uh, but not a. Uh. Mm, okay. In between. Yeah. yeah, like that. Yeah, I just, I, I, I sort of am allergic to the, the ones that go Bavara or Bavare. It's not E, eh, it's definitely not E. Eh. I just, just have, I, I like it to be more subtle because in speech, it's not, it doesn't stand out in speech because it's kind of the end of a word and they don't sometimes even say it. But uh, yeah, I like it if it's smaller yet pronounced, mm. articulated, but not thrown at you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Good. I mean, I love, I love, I love, I love your singing of this. Thank you, Susan. Uh, you're, oh, you're well, I know. Well, you made me cry. You made me cry because I was just like, Oh, that's so beautiful. I mean, this is a this is a an aria that that always it just pulls on your heartstrings. And thank you for pulling my heartstrings. You pulled my heartstring with your shed and we so. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I listen to it, I just like. Well, you were five years old when I made that recording, so there you go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. Thank all of you. I'm so proud of all of you tonight. Thank you for, for being patient enough to stand up through this, uh, this weird technology that we have these days. And thank you, Sandra. Beautiful playing all the way through. I know it's a lot. And I'm wondering what, I don't have any idea what time it is. What are we, 15 minutes? If anybody has anything they want to talk about or <laughs> ask or anything like that we can can we make that happen i'm sure we can um is L lorna are you on christina bell says yes, yes i am we're right here there's lorna yes um so do you want to put do people want to put things in the chat um if they would like to or I, let's ask the students who are in the hall if there's anything yeah. they would like to since they're already there you can run up on stage and say it into the microphone can i get a feed of the stage back oh there it is oh yeah come on to the stage oh this will be fun And if you want to ask a question after the person who's talking now, get get queued up on the steps so that you, we can mm -hmm. we don't have to wait for you to get up there. Oh, hi! I know those guys. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, bravi tutti! First of all. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank you. I'll do a great job. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? <laughs> Come on. You can't just stand there and say nothing. What's your favorite dessert? <laughs> Gosh, 
well, I'm trying to do keto right now. So dessert is not part of my repertoire, but uh, in a, in a normal time, I don't know. I'm a, you know, I'm a hot fudge Sunday girl. What can I tell you? I also like tiramisu. Oh wait, flan. Oh wait, bananas foster. I don't know. I can't. Make <laughs> Nothing is off the table. <laughs> Singer life. How old is your dog? Nine months. Oh. Oh. Yeah, she's still a puppy, <laughs> which is why she likes to eat everything. Rubes, come here. Here, I'll show you. She's on the couch. There she is. <laughs> come here. Wait. So, so, okay. Hi. Um, was there a, a certain point in your life where you knew that you wanted to do this uh, for the rest of your life? Was there a certain moment in, in your career where you felt um, or that you think back on every, every now and then and remember why you started? Well, I started out my life as a pianist. I mean, I started out my youth as a pianist and I studied piano for 13 years. And I, I, was, I was Sandra. I wasn't nearly as good as Sandra. <laughs> but I, I played for lessons. I played, and uh, the, one of the reasons I love baritone repertoire is because I had a lot of baritone boyfriends in college, so I learned all the rep. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, then, but, and and I was I was a competitive pianist all growing up in in Texas. So you know, in high school, I was playing Beethoven sonata competitions and all that stuff. Well, my senior year in high school. I got cast as Maria in The Sound of Music because I was singing all along and I thought that I was just having success because I was a good musician and I could sing the right notes at the right time. But then um, I was having to do singing competitions alongside the, the piano competitions and I was always in choir and stuff in school. And then it was sort of when I did Maria in The Sound of Music my senior year of high school that I realized that uh, life in front of the piano was more enjoyable for me than behind it. Also because I did not have a good memory for Mozart um, piano concertos. <laughs> Very humiliatingly lost my place in my senior recital. And I, that was kind of a turning point. I was like, I gotta find something else to do because this is not fun. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and then, and then I decided I was gonna be a voice major in college. Now, deciding to study it, and deciding that you want to do it for a living are two very different things. And there's a there's a quite a, a quite a, a, a number of years in between those two things where anything can happen. And in my case, I was in Texas and I was tired of being in Texas. So when I was 25 and I'd gotten one master's degree, I moved to New York to go to Manhattan School of Music. And I was determined that this is, this is the shot. If I can make this work, then maybe something good could happen. Not having any idea if it was going to or not, because I was a little bit green and I hadn't grown up in New York City where everybody grew up going to the Met and I felt very ill-prepared. Um, but I went there and I sort of threw myself into it with both feet and started getting some opportunities. And um, the thing that really changed changed it all was the opportunity to do um, a Massenet opera that had never been staged in this country before called Chirubin. And it's a whole opera about Carabino. <laughs> what could be more fun? And, um, and I got, it got a lot of attention at the Manhattan School of Music and, and I was, I was Chirubin and uh, it became, it became a turning point because the New York press came and then managers started noticing me and then I went to Marilla the next summer uh, after being rejected from Wolf Trap twice, Santa Fe twice. I got into Marilla and, uh, and that was another, I had some success there. I sort of won a couple of prizes there. And then, then I won the Met competition and that ball sort of just kept rolling. So probably when I was about 26 or 27, it became clear that this might just actually work. You know, there might be a profession. Now, mind you, I was, I would have been thrilled to have had the kind of career where you ride on a bus for seven hours and sing in, in the Appalachian mountains, you know, just as long as somebody was paying me to sing and I wasn't having to pay them for a change. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all know what that feels like. <laughs>
And, and so, you know, it worked out, but I always, I, I feel lucky every day, every day of my life. I feel lucky because you. you're welcome. That's probably a longer answer than you bargained for, but I think that's a very uplifting way to end our evening. I'm sure you feel like you've talked a lot. I'm going to stand in the middle here. <laughs> um, I'm also going to take my mask off. Anyway, um, I think we're going to, um, say good night to you because I'd like to invite everyone to come tomorrow at 1210 for the French Melody Masterclass and on Wednesday evening for the Pants Rolls class, which um, should be <laughs> a lot of fun. So um, I'd like to thank you, Susan Graham, for what a wonderful exploration of singing and interpreting that bring really brought something new to everybody and uh we really appreciate that um thank you to all of you singers for being wonderful and singing really well today and uh thank you to the stratton fund to borna to dean hasama and um we all of you for tuning in tonight can't really see who's here but um I hope <laughs> you a wonderful time and thank you susan we'll see you tomorrow Yes, we will. A bientôt. A demain. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo.